Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. Today let's solve maximum XOR for each query and I have to say for a short problem description, this one is pretty bad. I honestly might make it an interview question to just ask people how to make this description better. I'm not even joking. We're given a sorted array nums. When they say sorted, they mean sorted in ascending order. But interestingly enough, that is actually not really relevant to the problem. I don't think the problem changes if the array is not sorted. But these integers are non-negative. So let's say we have an array like this. We're also given a second parameter called maximum bit. And so this is two in this case. This represents the position. So you guys know with binary, you have a bunch of zeros and ones. This two means we're at this position because like, let's say in this example, we have two. So we're in that position. We have something like this. This is four in decimal. The reason we care about this is because there is a integer K. We're going to talk about what it represents, but it has to be less than two to the power of that max bit, which is two. And we know that that is four, just like up above. That's why I said that like that exponent, the max bit, it represents that position. We just need K to be less than two to the power of that max bit. I'll just call it M for short. So less than that, not equal to that, but less than that. So the max number that K could possibly be is three. And in binary, that's going to look like this, uh, zero, one, one. And since we're always saying two to the power of some exponent, we can kind of guarantee that this in binary is always going to look like one followed by some number of zeros. And then once we subtract one from it, it's going to be just a bunch of ones. That's going to be important in a minute. But for now, let's talk about what K actually represents. And so this is where things are going to get kind of interesting. So we want to convert this array into a array of answers is what they're calling it. But we want to answer a bunch of queries. So uh, we're going to have an array here on the left. The way the array is going to be populated is like this. We want to take all of these numbers x or them together so basically like this this is the xor character x or all of them and then x or it with some integer k such that this entire equation is maximized but remember that k cannot be bigger than this number so that's the constraint here and that constraint is never going to change Based on that criteria, we need to figure out what K is and whatever K happens to be for this query is going to be the first value in the output array. What's the second value going to be? It's pretty similar. It's going to be the XOR of all of these values except for the last one. So XOR the first three and then XOR it with K and then choose the K that maximizes this result and K cannot be uh, bigger than this number. And whatever the answer to this query is, is going to be the second value in the output. And then we just keep kind of going like this. The last value in the output is going to be just the first value XOR with K. We can choose the largest K and then that'll be the last value. So the main thing with this problem is obviously how do you figure out the optimal K for some subarray? These queries, by the way, are just prefixes, aren't they? I mean, when they say the entire array like that with K, that is associated with the first and then all the other elements are associated with the second. It's kind of like a reverse prefix. But if we really wanted to, we could just take this prefix, put it at the beginning take this prefix, put it next, and kind of just keep going like that. And then at the end, we could just reverse all of these. The order that we do these honestly isn't going to be relevant. Well, when I say order, we could go from left to right or right to left. That doesn't matter. You can't just kind of go randomly. Okay, but now, still, knowing that, how do we solve the problem? We need a little bit of intuition. First of all, the reason that they give us this constraint, you have to at least a little bit recognize that if there wasn't a constraint like this, well, we would just pick like the largest value that we possibly could like for this or for this equation here, we have zero XOR with binary one, XOR binary one, XOR with binary three. Uh, just stacking these on top of each other, you get an output, I believe, of three. 
And if our max bit here is two, that means our number can't be larger than two to the four or two to the two, which is four. So K uh, must be less than four. It can be at most three. And so I think what you'll find is that if you try XORing 0, 1, 2, and 3, all of those uh, with this, the largest is going to be when you XOR it with 0. This stays the same. It'll be 3. So uh, this 0, which was K, XORed with that, gave us that 3. So K is a 0. So that will be the answer to the first query because that's the entire array. Obviously, if we could choose a K that's like arbitrarily big, we could just you know take something like 1, 1, and then put zeros where all the ones are, and then just put ones where everything else is, including like the most significant bits. So how would that look like? Let's think about that. Let's assume I just had some array, and then I XOR all the values together, not including the K, so just the array values. And let's say I got something that looks like this in binary, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. I'm just picking random values here. So this was the result that I got. And here for M, let's choose 4. So we have... 2, let's say to the power of 4, that's 16. 4 corresponds to this bit, or sorry, rather this one. So 16 would look like this in binary. But we are not allowed to choose a K that is equal to this or greater than this. The largest possible K that we could choose is this one. One less than this, which would look like this. Just four ones. And so now I'll kind of just uh, ignore this for a second. What we want to do is take this. This was the XOR of our array. This is the max possible value that K could be. So while we could brute force this, there's actually an easier way. By saying that K has to be less than this number, we're saying that everything to the left of here cannot be set, at least in terms of K. These bits cannot be set in k they could be set like in the number or in the array or whatever they just can't be set with k and so with these remaining ones we can possibly flip some of these with our k value if we choose it intelligently how should we choose the k let's take a very close look we have four ones here here we have one one zero zero if we want to increase this we should keep these two the same and flip these two in other words, just take this and invert it. You get this, 0, 0, 1, 1. So the number itself, invert that, and you get this. And so this is the magic number. This is the K value. Now, the question is, how do you arrive at this? Or in other words, how do you take a number and invert like the binary representation? Well, that's a bit manipulation trick, actually. And it is literally XORing. XORing with a bunch of ones. So if you had four ones and you XORed that with this, you're going to get 0011, the inverse. And that's what we want K to be for that particular query. So that's the solution. Just take this number to the power of M, subtract one from it. You're going to get this mask, you could call it like a bit mask. And then using that, you can XOR it with the result of like that subarray XOR. And that'll give you the K value. Very quickly, let me just dry run through this. The order that you do this in honestly doesn't matter. Like I said, you could do it from the beginning and then reverse the result. But I'm going to do it this way where we're going to compute the entire XOR. So then I have that. I'm going to take my bit mask and XOR it with that as well. Then I'll get the answer to the first query. Then I want to get just this subarray, removing this guy. And there's a very easy to do that with XOR math. XORs cancel each other out. So if I just take this entire thing, XOR it with another three, the last element, I will remove the last element. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take this input array and I'm going to actually iterate through it in reverse order. And as I do that, I'll be populating the answer array from left to right. And then I can just return the answer array as it is. With this way, the time complexity is big O of N. Usually we don't count the output array as extra space. So if you're doing that, you can say that it's constant space. Okay, once you do all that like bit manipulation stuff, this problem becomes pretty easy. So like I said, just going to go through everything from left to right and uh, XORing all these together. And then we have the entire XOR. 
Now I'm going to iterate through the input array in reverse order. Nice little trick in Python for n in reversed nums. This will just go through the input array in reverse order. We want to populate an answer array. I'll actually call it answer for once. Usually I call it result, but in the context of this problem, I guess it makes sense to do it this way. Now for the actual population, we want to take that XOR value that we had up above, XOR, and we want to XOR it with the mask I was talking about. What's the mask? Well, I'll set it to two to the power of m maximum bit minus one. You could also write it this way where you shift one to the left by this much and uh, subtract one from that. So that gives us the mask. XORing these two gives us the magic K number. Using that, we can append it to the result. Um, before the next iteration of the loop, let's remove N from the XOR so that the XOR is updated for the next iteration. So we'll just XOR it with N to cancel it out. And that is pretty much the entire solution, assuming I don't have any bugs. And yes, you can see it works and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful or if you like my teaching style, and maybe you want to learn Python, consider checking out Neat Code IO. We got a growing number of courses, got Python for coding interviews, probably my favorite course that I've created, working on Python OOP, and recently launched Postgres for beginners. You actually write interactive code and learn new concepts in sort of a leak code style way. Check it out if you're interested.